it was very common for the forces to traverse the area and uh, establish their own kind of bolt hole uh, in various places. So Richard has decided that it's a very strategic idea to try and get his forces into this area and unknown to him Salah Hadin's men have had word of this baggage train coming through and as I said they are laying in wait to ambush Richard and his men. King Richard there, very distinctive in his red surcoat with two gold lions on the front. Also his shield also bearing the same distinction and arms. Heraldry in those days were very much a way of being able to distinguish which group that you were belonging to and the banner was a very important item because it was your rallying point uh, during times of retreat or at times when it was necessary to regroup and reinforce. Once you have lost men and you need support and backup, it was very important for the rest of the troops to be able to know that they had a rallying point and that they could find themselves on the right side of the battle. Salahuddin has obviously spotted Richard and his small band of, of knights and have sent forward his lightly armoured skirmishers to make an engagement, whereas Richard's forces are very cohesive, well trained and will fight in formation. Salahuddin's men are very loose, very lightly armoured and will attack from all sides. Looking very much as though Salah Hadid has also brought forward some of his archers. To have uh, a storm of arrows raining down upon you is quite a terrifying experience. Richard's army was well used to this and would stand their ground defending themselves and the man along to their right hand side. It was all about keeping cohesion, keeping together as a force, defending yourself and the person to the right hand side of you. Richard's horses coming back and trying to regroup while they're being pursued by Salah Hadim's men. Just at the moment, it seems to be that Richard has the upper hand. He has the greater number of men in support of him. Richard and his forces seem to be holding their own.
keeping a cohesive group, surrounding their baggage train and protecting their possessions that they have brought along with them. Sometimes the idea of these small skirmishes were not always entirely to kill every last man standing, but it's a show of power and strength. Sometimes the, the better way of defending yourselves was to parlay with your opponent, because very much of the time it was thought that it was a very unchristian thing to do to kill and slaughter people, so if they could broker a peace, parlay between the two leaders and bring about a more peaceful outcome, then that's what they would strive to do. The idea of the uh, Saracen forces also was to avoid bloodshed as far as possible. So if Richard comes forward to call for a parley with Salah Hadid, then the two leaders will come forward and try to discuss terms of peace. Richard has seen that his men are tiring slightly and that uh, the, the battle doesn't seem to be going very well in his favour at the moment. So it may be at this time that Richard will seek to come forward and try and discuss some kind of peace terms with his opposite number, Salah Hadid. So once again, Richard has instructed his men to form a circle, once again protecting the baggage train and that all-important banner with the two golden lions. To lose your banner on the battlefield was uh, a, a great disgrace. So the longer you could hold your banner as your rallying point for your forces, the better chance that... Uh, your backup army could come and support you as your men fell by the wayside, either wounded or perhaps even killed outright. Saracen riders once again being pursued by Richard's mounted knights. Uh, engaging a small hand to hand skirmish. Any kind of combat involving horses doesn't usually have a very good outcome because the horse the outcome of the battle is determined very much on the behavior of the horses horses are very intelligent animals and they don't like the clash of weapons very much and if they can do anything they can to get out of the way of combat, they certainly will. More intelligent than human beings sometimes, if you ask me. So 
So the two leaders have uh, chosen to come forward to parlay some kind of a, a, a peace deal, some kind of a way in which uh, Richard and his forces can pass through this area onto the next city, hopefully be left at peace. But sometimes these parlays do not go very well, particularly when one side is determined that they are going to protect their own people and that they don't want any interference from any other outside forces. So as a mark of good faith, Salah Hadin has asked Richard if his people will lay down their arms to show that they mean to carry on in a peaceful way, but that would leave Richard open and vulnerable to further attacks. So Richard is reluctant to surrender any of his armaments and weapons. So if a peace cannot be reached, then they will probably decide to uh, engage in open combat once again. Sal Hadid has said that they are determined to hold the area Every man has vowed to fight until the death if necessary. So Richard will not get his peaceful transit through this area to the next city. Unfortunately, Salah Hadin is determined to hold on to his land. As in many times of war, there is often peace talks brokered. And if both sides cannot agree on peace terms, then it's back to open warfare. Perhaps having seen the stronghold and realised that... Uh, his men are short on provisions and water and food. Richard has decided that it would be better to try and attack this area and take it away from the hands of the Saracens in order to be able to feed and water his men, give them the opportunity of having some respite from their combat exertions. Having seen how well fortified the area is, and that it might give them an advantage when they meet against a larger force. Both sides now are falling back to regroup, to assess the situation. With Richard and his men coming forward again, attacking the Saracens. They've seen the strategic value of the buildings that are surrounding them. So they are determined that they will get the upper hand over Salah Hadid's force. You 
might have noticed, ladies and gentlemen, the difference in the fighting forces and the way in which they are armoured and the weaponry that is being used at the time. Salah Hadid's men favoured small shields, swords for close in combat, which was very effective. Also, during this period, archery proved to be a great defensive weapon against the Western forces. No matter how well armoured Richard and his men are, and many of his knights are wearing chain mail and very sturdy steel helmets, arrows usually have a way of finding their way into the smallest chink in anybody's armour and with enough force behind the arrow being launched they can penetrate through and inflict rather nasty serious wounds if not actually causing somebody to be killed. So different tactics call for different types of weapon and armoury Richard's men favouring to be wearing chain mail and steel helmets, protecting themselves with shields and using their swords, again giving them greater opportunity to engage in close quarter fighting, whereas a lot of Salah Hadeen's forces are very lightly armoured skirmishers usually used for a, a very quick assault on the flanks of a trained fighting force. centre of a circle. Your back is protected by those on either side of you and by facing out you can meet the opposing armies coming towards you. Not a tactic employed in this day and age very much these days due to the fact of being able to use uh, long-range weapons but where you were engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat in these days, it was very effective to protect your army by forming a circle around a strategic area, such as a bag baggage train. Many of Richard's forces seem to have fallen back there are a few left on the battlefield to try and mop up the last of the skirmishers. Sometimes the better part of valour in those days was to actually retreat and be able to regroup and maybe meet up with reinforcements for a better way of being able to engage the enemy. To take the retreat was by no means a sign of cowardice in these days, but a means of being able to resupply and reinforce your troops to also give the men, the horses, opportunity to rest 